not what you've experienced. Did you know there are two types of gurus? Well, yes or no? no. <laughs> Sit there like rocks. <laughs> I lean very heavily on um, the language of the gods by Judith M. Tyberg. The second edition published in 1976 called The Language of the Gods, Sanskrit Keys to India's Wisdom. And also on Ali, Arthur and Anthony McDowell's A Practical Sanskrit, Sanskrit Dictionary published in 2001. And also on the Hindu guys that ran my local magazine and newspaper and cigar store in New York, who actually had learned Sanskrit. So when I couldn't figure out a Sanskrit thing, a word, I took it up to them and I said, is this the right translation in, in, in the book? You know, they could, you know it's, a, it's a language of consciousness. So when a Western person translates it as an aspect of matter, I have a right to find out. So these, these guys in the tobacco shop said, oh no, that doesn't mean that. So I was helped by these three sources, by the way. But Judith Heiberg's book is a wonderful book. Are, are any of you here familiar with it? T-Y-B-E-R-G. In Tyberg's book, but not only there, guru is translated into English as a teacher, right? Okay. Um, there, there are three different aspects to this. Number one, teachers transfer to their students only the information they are supposed to, while learners receive that information the best they can. This is in the dictionary. Got it? So. You've been taught what you've been taught, and you've learned it the best you can, and the teacher's done the best he can to transfer that information to you. And the second, information that conflicts with what is taught and learned is discouraged and not taught. Have any of you ever experienced that? Yep. Three, innate potential capacities that might conflict with what is to be taught, learned, are likewise discouraged, not taught, and not developed into reality, actuality, rather. Have any of you experienced that? Were you taught remote viewing in, in grade one? Why not? Were you taught telepathy in the third grade? Why not? Did you ever wonder why not? I'll, I'll be easy on you here tonight. Where's my two, two gurus here? Okay. Tyberg, and I'm sure she's correct, defines a guru as one who has the capacity to pass on his realization to those who seek him for wisdom. There may be an outer guru or guide who removes ignorance by the radiant light of his divine wisdom or the inner guru self who is the guide working through the intuitive part of man. Have you ever been worked with intuitively by any of your teachers? Yes, I have. They're good teachers, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, there's one guru that can pass on his realizations of what he's learned and it falls into the category of a teacher. Are you with me on this? There's a second guru, the one, the inner guru, who is the guide working through the intuitive part of man. That's the fourth loka he's talking about, the intuitional loka, which we, which we call intuition, Don't, do we not? How many of you had intuition experiencing? 
have to make sure of the audience, you know. <coughs> Do you know where the word guru comes from in Sanskrit? No. It comes from the root meaning gri, G-R-I, meaning to invoke, to praise. So a guru is basically supposed to be, anyway, invoke something in his chelas or his students. What would be the most likely thing that the second guru would try to invoke in his students? Intuition. He, t he uses his intuition to invoke the intuition category or capacities of his students. That's different from just left hemisphere teaching, isn't it? That falls sort of into a right hemisphere interaction between teacher and student. We don't know that, but they knew it way back when, these Sanskrit people. Now, have I bothered you enough so far? Yes? So invoke means to awaken, right? To bring into existence, to turn on the switch, any of those things here. And it's done by the intuitive interpenetration <laughs> part of, of whatever is interpenetrating it, which is universal, apparently, because it pervades all existence. Have it, and so you can, you can awaken intuition, and when you awaken intuition, you awaken the uh, powers of intuition. We think of all this differently, you see. We think all of these powers are separate things. But what if they're all functions or modulations of intuition? Precognition, telepathy, so forth and so on, are just modulations of what we have translated into English from the Sanskrit as intuition just turning the dial on the band or something like that. And when, they, when the Sanskrit people got together, they thought they could, you have forewarnings, you have premonitions, you have this and that. These are spontaneous occurrences, right? If you work for them, you don't get them. I'm talking about the spontaneous experiential kind because if you don't plan to have them and they happen anyway, then they're more real as if you try to happen and you make, mess it up. So these things, let's divide intuition in compartments, but it's all rotating. They're all interpenetrating with each other and everything. And at a certain modulation, you get intuition, what we would call intuition. We also get, could get telepathy. We could, could get clairvoyance. We could get traveling clairvoyance, as now remote viewing as it's now known, things like that. And these were referred to as the Siddhis, S-I-D-D-H-I-S in Sanskrit. And there's a great deal of argument among the scholars about how many siddhis there are. Some say seven, some say 50, and you know, like philosophers like to try to outdo each other all the time. The term city is translated in English with very good authority for many, well, a few centuries anyway, as an attainment. And I personally believe that's a bad choice of words because it should be becoming, it should be translated a little bit more as becoming, becoming in an awakening of some kind on the intuitive levels. Anyhow, um, they're called attainments in the literature, the act of attaining, the condition of being attained, something attained, and an accomplishment. I shall now pick a few of these cities and um, um, taken from the sutra, Sutras of Patanjali. Are you all familiar with that? 